What should we as a society stop making people feel insecure about? By Ask Reddit. Being quiet. The way someone laughs. This world is cold and unforgiving. Laughing makes it all a little less heavy. Who gives a f of what it sounds like? Right. I'll never forget in high school when I was laughing in Spanish class. The girl in front of me turned around and went, You girl, you got an ugly laugh and everyone started laughing with her. It's been 15 years and I'm still self-conscious of my laugh because of that. Trade school forward slash gap years college right after HS isn't for everyone. Even some of my smartest friends top of my class should have taken a gap because they burned themselves out getting 95 to 97 percent AVs throughout HS. Exactly. I'm one of them. I never should have jumped into college. I went for something I was talked into, because it paid a lot, was miserable, changed majors, still wasn't happy. Graduated with a degree, 13 years ago that I never used. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I needed time to figure it out. And money isn't all that matters. Your choice of career. Another one, not having having a dream career. Being wrong. It's okay to be wrong, just be open to learning. Instead of doubling down or getting angry. I was looking for this answer. People would be a lot smarter if we could all just admit when we don't know, or when we have been wrong about something. There is always room to grow, and it's more than okay to change your mind. You are not allowed to apologize for anything on social media ever. It just unleashes the hordes of self-righteous keyboard warriors. That's a sad state, because nobody is learning anything anymore, just doubling down on their stupidity. To the internet hoard your either. One lying to get people off your back, which they notice immediately, even if you were sincere. Although lots of internet apologies are bullpoo. Or. Too sincere and remorseful, but they still poo on you for what you already apologized for, especially if you apologized because of some dumb drama bullpoo. It's impossible to placate these people I swear their jobs. If you clean slash fix sewerage pipes, then thanks for your service. Someone must have the balls to do it. And garbage people. Never knock the people who take out your trash. They're doing an important service. There are few people more responsible for the clean, relatively disease-free, safe, modern world we live in than sanitation workers. This includes janitors, street cleaners, garbage workers, and anyone who cleans up after the rest of us. I have as much respect for them as I do firefighters and EMTs. I'm a firefighter and when someone thanks me I always remind them that while I love my job and I'm happy to serve, society falls apart faster without the trash man than without the fireman. Pretty sure the ones in NYC could cripple the whole city by going on strike if they felt like it. Doing garbage work is back-breaking work man, and has a very high fatality rate, it ain't easy. Major respect, I could never do it. My neighbor used to be a garbage man, his union benefits were so good he worked three days a week, and went to Disneyland one year and a Disney cruise the next, on rotation for years. I just commented above regarding the union history behind sanitation workers. Before the union, it was horrid. Thank you. The whole blue collar and white collar thing has always pissed me off. Trade schools are awesome and doing a trade is awesome. You may look around and see two groups here. White collar, blue collar. But I don't see it that way. And you know why not? Because I am colorblind. Why can't I use the baler? I've seen Pudge use it. Exactly. I worked for Target for six years and got plenty of poo about it by friends and even complete strangers. I've had people disagree with stuff I've said on FB, then say something like what do you know, you work at Target. It's completely dehumanizing. 
especially retail workers man. Not enough pay for the daily bulbu and crap treatment from management. There's nothing wrong with being a plumber, but be aware that the grunt work is a young man's game. Have an exit strategy. Either move up or plan to move out. I went into a trade after getting my bachelor's. I should have done this years ago. The pay is great and the health benefits are even better. I'm thinking about leaving my grad program for it. So over academia. I just want to go to work, come home and not care. Amen. Making any kind of mistake. Social media has created an illusion that everyone has to be perfect. Honestly we should praise mistakes. If you don't make mistakes you aren't pushing yourself, which is the only real mistake. We have a no blame culture at work. It's more important to get stuff working again than it is to know whose fault it was. Yes, we work out what happened, but only so we know how to avoid similar issues in the future. It's very refreshing. Sure is. I came from a make a mistake you are fired IT slash cyber security culture. I was always so hesitant to try new things in the program slash scripts I'd write I never really tried anything. Left there for a similar no blame culture, I have learned how to create, break and fix so much since I left. Aging and the unavoidable physical changes that come with it. What Clint Eastwood looks like now will shock you. Then show picture of him at 25 and 1 from now. WTF he is 90 years old. That headline gets way more clicks than, breaking news, old man looks old. I agree wholeheartedly, so long as we're talking about things like wrinkles, thinning hair, sagging whatevers, etc. I'm a 35F and these things are starting to happen on a small level and I vacillate between being totally cool with it and freaking out and feeling putty about myself. I hate the fact these normal things everyone experiences make me feel so insecure, but then I reflect on the fact that many of the actors, vocalists and other performers I admire have barely aged in many, many years. It would be nice to have more of those types of humans embody true graceful aging, rather than fight so hard to preserve the looks of their youth lest they be deemed less valuable due to their wrinkles etc. It's such a bummer. There are so many examples of male actors aging naturally, with seemingly no negative effects on how desirable forward slash valuable they are perceived to be as a human. I wish we lady folk could see the same on the same level. This is so well said. On one hand, I know how grateful I should be to be alive and healthy and able to experience aging, on the other hand, seeing grey hairs and fine lines when I look in the mirror is very disheartening. It's weird when it comes alongside random aches and pains that can't be explained, some of which never seem to go away completely like they used to. Understanding that we're literally falling apart on the level of our DNA makes it all so unromantic lol it feels better when you look at your childhood chums and they are going through it too. You can laugh at the absurdity of life and death together. But when you're mostly alone, surrounded by younger folks, or watching never aging stars on the TV, it just feels like there's something wrong with you and only you. I wish we women would all band together and make it easier for ourselves, take back our value and power as mothers, wise women and elders. I tell myself all the time my value is so much more than my pretty face or perky boobs. But it's hard to keep that mantra up when all of society seems to be telling me otherwise. This reminded me of something an old boss of mine told me. He said his wife was always complaining that she felt and looked so old and he didn't feel that way about himself or her. Neither could figure out why the other felt that way until it finally clicked, he was VP of a nursing home, and she was a college professor. Who you surround yourself with affects how you feel about yourself, and how you feel about how well you're aging. None we all think less of ourselves as we age, but beauty is timeless no matter how weathered. Tourists still flock to Athens. Your job. Too many people are elitist about someone's occupation and look down on essential workers. Or look down on boring jobs. I have a stable, 
relatively well-paying job as an accountant and I have had several comments from friends and family making fun of me or making snide comments about how boring my job slash life is like I've totally sold out because I'm not a teacher or an artist. I think because it's such a safe career choice they feel like they're not punching down but it just makes me feel really lame and embarrassed. Boring jobs pay bills. They would still complain if you didn't choose a boring job too. Trust me, I'm an artist face with tears of joy. What? You'll never make a living doing that. Everyone. Boring jobs pay bills. Work to live, not live to work. Go get that stable cash, my friend, and then enjoy your off time. It's frightening how many people define themselves by their work, and wouldn't have an identity without it. We're human beings, not work horses. We're unique individuals who have interests and hobbies that can separate us from the rabble and yet so many don't even step outside their box to see what makes them have fun. I like to ask people, what do you do when you're not at place of work? Usually, it's a lot more interesting. Nobody dreams of being a floor manager at Kmart, but I worked with a Kmart floor manager who was passionate about clowning. Every weekend, he would dress up, drive to the children's hospital two hours away and perform for the kids there. He'd been doing it for over 20 years by the time I met him. Being a garbage man is so taboo and shameful Karen yes the guy whose job is necessary for our entire society to function the way isn't glamorous but it's incredibly important. How horrible to have a blue collar unionized public sector job with benefits. My friend's dad was a garbage man, I thought it was the coolest job. Oh to ride on the back of that truck, keep all the stuff people threw away. It was my dream job as a kid. My mom is 59 years old and that's still her dream job, and for exactly the reason you listed. She's had several careers and always been in management on some level until this current job. Couple rounds of cancer later and some pooty arthritis setting in and I'll bet if waste management called her right now, she'd jump on the back of that truck in a heartbeat. Having acne, it doesn't mean you're dirty or don't wash your face. It's simply a skin condition some people get and some people don't. Oh, what's that? You have hormones. Oh, what's that? You're stressed out. Oh, what's that? You just naturally effing produce more sebum and can't do poo about it without spending a ton of money. F you. At age 29 I saw a dermatologist for the, the first time to see if I had skin cancer. When I was there she asked if I wanted to do something about my acne. I've had acne my entire life and now my face is clear and I get compliments on my pores all the time and it has been life changing. All it took was having money to visit dermatologist, $50 copay, really $130 if I wasn't insured plus time off from work face wash from dermatology, $26 prescribed face lotion, $38 at own, $200 with insurance, it costs $800 without insurance. Seriously $800. Tretinoin, $10 with insurance prescribed lotion, $18 with insurance sunscreen from dermatology, $45. I did have skin cancer on my face so I invest in sun protection. Having extra money to spend is a complete effing game changer in life. I have been made fun of for my acne for so long that I feel for anyone who can't afford to see a professional. I never realized that the solution to my acne would be having money to fix it. It is so expensive it is so disappointing to say edit, and I forgot to add DML lotion for $18. Just so you know, Dapsin is the generic form of Achone and is $20-30 with a coupon from goodx.com. Might be worth talking to your dermatologist, I'm a medical assistant who works in a dermatology practice. And the number of effing people who tell me just stop eating dairy. Is unbelievable. I had acne in in my mid-twenties. Had to have a hysterectomy. I could no longer have babies, but boy did I ever get perfect skin out of the deal. It's funny how almost everyone has struggled with acne but we still insist on shaming each other for it. 
needing mental health treatment. Even if that treatment includes medication. I get so many weird backhanded comments when people find out I take psychiatric medication. I hate that people think of it as the easy way out and view me as giving up or being weak. I have never understood, I'm 54 years old and I can't understand why people think mental health is just an expression of will. I think it's because people without mental health conditions literally can't imagine what it feels like, so it takes a lot of empathy to try and understand. Mental health is similar to physical health. You can get sick for a little bit, sick for a long time, have trauma that caused permanent disabilities, have inherited disabilities, and be born with disabilities. Edit. I should say that they can influence each other to a large degree. Mental health struggles. There's absolutely nothing wrong with taking time to figure out what process works for you, despite why people around you might want to tell you. Had to scroll down a lot to find this, and I wish it was higher up. Mental health forward slash mental illness is a real issue for a lot of people, and society in general has a hard time understanding them and are quick to judge, making the ones who struggle with it feel insecure about asking for help and getting treatment. Shame this stigma still exists in 2021. Exercising in public. To me anyone giving it a go, no matter their physical ability, deserves praise. Honestly from my experience most gym rats are the most encouraging to heavy people. A few of the guys I used to work out with, just be at the gym the same time every morning, kinda made it a point to say small comments to this very heavy set guy that worked out at the same time as us in the morning you got this brother. Keep up the good work man you're looking good man. This guy's face always lit up and he always pushed harder when anyone encouraged him. Edit. Spelling. Oh dear, this just makes me scared to go to the gym. I like to exercise, but if somebody acknowledges that, yes, I am exercising, I get self-conscious and stop until they stop looking at me. I'm with you, any acknowledgement of my presence at all would make me supremely uncomfortable haha. <laughs> if you wear headphones then it's more likely that people will leave you alone. Gym goes are actually very nice people a lot of the time boldness. It doesn't seem to be as common for it to happen naturally with women, but for men and women, it can be a really sore subject, especially if it starts happening at a fairly early age. You could be in control of every other aspect of your life, but if you start losing hair early, it can take the wind out of your sails. Edit, wow, thanks for the gold and all the supportive comments. Seeing the responses here has shown me that there are more positive perceptions on bald forward slash balding people than I thought. In honor of my deceased grandfather, God only made a few perfect heads, the rest are covered with hair. Edit, thanks so much guys. I never imagined my most liked and awarded comment would be about bald heads. As a bald guy, I'm stealing this. My dad was monk status at 23, my grandfather at 19. I started thinning at 30 and have a patch on the back of my head now. It sucks knowing that it's only going to get worse, but I can at least be proud to have beaten genetics and held on this long. Mine started going at the back in my mid-twenties. I held onto it for a while and from the front, it looked fine. Some people didn't even notice it at the back, either that, or they were being nice but it was horrible to think that from the front I looked mid-twenties, but from the back, I looked mid-forties. I took the plunge and shaved it off last year and that insecurity melted away. Sometimes I do feel a little jealous of my friends who have good hair, we're all early thirties now, mostly because of the options they have, and the fact that some of them will probably never go bald, but doing something about it definitely made it not seem like as big of a deal. I've been lazy since Covid started and haven't gotten a haircut since 3 months before the lockdowns began, so my hair is far longer than I almost ever have it. Apparently, even that's not enough to cover the missing patch on the back. I may follow suit and big my head in the near future. Seems inevitable. I had super thick curly hair, even had a huge afro sophomore year of high school, and I eventually got the patch in the back which made me super insecure. 
I would even record videos on my phone of the bald patch to see how bad it looked and felt like POO all the time. I hated getting haircuts so I always just wore hats slash beanies to cover it up but even then I still felt insecure about it. I finally decided to shave it bald and I immediately felt better. Like a 10 ton weight was lifted off my shoulders. I regret not doing it sooner because I wasted years obsessing over it. No one even gave a f once I did it lol. I still rock hats slash beanies a lot but now I don't think twice about taking them off if I feel like it. That alone is worth the 5 minutes it takes to shave it every morning. I'm a 31 year old woman and I've developed a small widow's peak and have a somewhat noticeable back part to my hair. It sucks and I'm super insecure. 26F and my hair had started thinning out since I turned 20, and it's still falling. I used to struggle to get a hair tie around twice, now my hair is so fine and uneven. I noticed I'm more aware and envious now of other women's hair thickness sigh. I'm 19 and already looking like Bruce Willis from Die Hard, probably even worse than that, thinner at the front. And wearing wigs and toupees. It feels like you're ridiculed if you're bald, but it's even worse if you're trying to look like you're not bald and you're found out, for some reason.